Welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm your co-host, Jeffrey Walk. And I'm Elizabeth Finlayson. We're from the networking group, TNG, which is Chicago's premier business networking group focused on helping members and making a difference in the communities we serve. Ask the Experts is an effort to share our knowledge with a wider audience. Each week, Ask the Experts responds to questions from individuals and organizations about a problem they have faced. We always welcome questions and feedback, and you can reach us at asktheexperts at gmail.com. That's asktheexperts, all one word, at gmail.com. On to this week's episode. Today's episode, our guest today is Mary Jane Derricks, who runs Mary Jane Derricks Interiors in Chicago, Illinois. We will explore ways design impacts our life at home. Many of our listeners and followers are trying to adjust to a new reality with COVID-19 to ensure that their workspaces are safe and functional at work and at home. So we asked Mary Jane to provide some of her expertise to share a few design considerations. Thank you, Mary Jane. It's a pleasure to be here. Mary Jane, thank you for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about your company and the services you offer? Yes, um, we are a full service interior design firm that has been in business for over 30 years. We accept projects as small as a two hour online consultation and as large as helping a couple build their own custom home. We have sources for anything we could possibly need to do in your home, but we also will work with your sources. Oftentimes a couple may have past experience with a contractor or a painter and I think that it's important that they're allowed to keep those resources if they wish. I have to say, doing this this Zoom interview right now, I feel self-conscious about my home, and I think a lot of people doing these Zoom calls are feeling that way. What are three design considerations that I should consider for my home or people when they're considering these types of services? Um, Okay, so I believe that our homes are sacred spaces. They are attached to our identities. And that's why you feel uncomfortable with Zoom meetings, right? Um, and it's, they're also the spaces that we feel most comfortable. So with all that in mind, our homes need to be safe. Our homes need to function well for us. And our homes need to bring us joy and make us feel good. Um, in terms of, okay, so let me expound on that. In terms of making our homes safe, it depends on who's living there, of course. If it's a family with a baby or a toddler or small children, that's gonna look much different than a healthy professional couple. And that's gonna look much different than an elderly couple. Um, so, you know, you really need to zoom in on what your needs are for a safe home. But all homes need to be as non-toxic as possible, and all homes need to have a space that allows the human body to rejuvenate. Um, You know, you come home and it just needs to be your safe world away from the stresses and toxins in the outside world. You know, that's really important because when I think about all the things that we're trying to deal with, toxins aside, we've also got COVID and other things that are challenging us. A lot of people are obviously on strained budgets and whatnot. How do you work with people on limited budgets but still impart beauty in the design? Beauty comes in every budget. Um, People should strive to get the very best they can within their budget and not spend any more than they should. I feel that's really important. Um, The number one thing that people of all budgets should do is get rid of clutter. Um, Clutter makes us feel like our homes aren't big enough when they are. And when I'm talking about getting rid of clutter, I mean inside our drawers, inside our cabinets, inside our closets. And when you do that, you're gonna feel like you are in a new home. Oh, I had another thought on that. Uh, Oh, yeah. You're going to get more satisfaction when you want to declutter. You're going to get more satisfaction by concentrating on one room and doing it 100% and then moving on. And the same thing holds true with design. You're going to get more satisfaction if you completely design a room to its entirety rather than piecemeal all over the house. So know that. Um, The other thing that's critical is lighting. Lighting needs to be in layers. First of all, 
all lights should be on dimmers all the time. If a light can be on a dimmer, it needs to be on a dimmer. Um, lots of times I'll go into a family room, you know, a great room or a family room, and they have outstanding can lighting in their ceiling, but it's the only lighting in the room. So every time they're in that room, the whole room is like just blasted with light. First of all, those cans need to be on dimmers and lamps with lampshades will you know, give you a much warmer feeling at times when you want that. Um, there's also mood lighting that can be applied. You might have a large plant or a potted tree. Um, you could put a light in the dirt shining up and that'll give you a lot of dimension um, and shadows playing on the walls and ceiling. Um, mood lighting can also be a um, like a salt lamp. You may have seen them. They're sold in so many places at Whole Foods, Bed Bath & Beyond online, but they're literally a, a chunk of salt. It's typically pinkish or orangish in color. Um, it's got a dim light bulb in it and having that on will give you the same feeling as having like embers glowing in the fireplace. It's really powerful and they're supposed to be good for um, detoxing the air in your home as well. So a couple of key takeaways are just don't spread yourself too thin and if you don't have if you don't have a lot of money even if you just did something with decluttering and lighting, you're way ahead of the game. So now we have these home offices and we're working remotely. What do you see there in the world of design and how we make that work? It's so funny. It's like all of the above, all of the above. Um, so because Zoom meetings are so popular right now, I'm on so many of them. And, you know, even on like news stations, the people they're interviewing are, being interviewed out of their home. And the biggest mistake I see is clutter in the background, poor lighting. Um, it's also important for you to manage your cords, most importantly in your home office. But um, cord management is real important. There's ways to get your cords out of view. You know, if you have a bunch of them, you can buy this hollow plastic tube to contain them all and make it just one thing. Uh, you can buy um, little things that you can stick to the, your, the back of your tabletops and your furniture legs so that the cords are totally hidden all the way to the wall. And that's really important. I think the most important piece of furniture is your chair and you need and deserve to purchase the most efficient chair that you can afford. If it needs to move around, make sure it moves on casters. If it needs to swivel, make sure you get one that swivels. Make sure the height is adjustable and the back is adjustable. You should also have, okay, so your work surface needs to be large enough and again, it needs to be uncluttered. I have a huge work surface, so it's easy for me to collect piles and have things that don't belong on my desk still there. But I make a point every evening when I shut down, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have outstanding file space. So I make sure that things are filed away. Do you see that as the single biggest mistake when people are setting up a home office is not creating space to work, having too much clutter, or do you see anything else that's, that gets in people's way when they're setting up a home office? Okay, so do you mean an official office in a room with a door? Possibly. It could be that. Or, you know, I imagine you've probably seen a lot of different um, arrangements for people's home offices, you know, whether it's a corner of a room or, yeah. Let's see, what tips can I give you? Um, in terms of, okay, so I really love looking outdoors. So it was important for me to place my desk so that I can see the outdoors. Um, in terms of feng shui, they feel that the power position is as far away from the door and facing the door as possible. And in, in many cases, that will create the window behind you. And then you've got glare on your screen. So one way to um, manage that is to have a window treatment 
that um, is able to be top down or bottom up. Most window shades are bottom up when you open them, right? But if you purchase one that allows you to expose the window by pulling the shade down, you can keep it high enough to get keep the glare off your, you know, your um, monitor and still have daylight coming in the top of the window. When we talk about um, design, one of the things that you often hear from designers and, and people that have experienced it is you know, the way that great design can impact their lives. How does it work in the home? I know that it's a sacred space, but what can you do there? I love that question. Um, great design reduces stress. Great design brings you joy and great design is totally tied into your self-esteem. So it's important to recognize that and, you know, um, put time and effort and money into it. When you say that it can, like, it, it's tied to your self-esteem and yes. all that, um, can you give an example of like what that means? So many times couples will walk me around their house and, you know, they're embarrassed. They're like, oh, you know, don't pay any attention to that because I just put that there when we moved in and, you know, that's where it landed. Or, you know, I could tell they're embarrassed and they absolutely shouldn't be embarrassed to be showing me things because I'm the one that's going to fix everything. So I know that if they're embarrassed to show me, you know, they're embarrassed when company's over. And um, you should really... Um, Take the time and the energy to make your home as nice as you can afford to. When you design a room, and again, let's say you're on a limited budget, mm -hmm. um, does each room have its own personality? It, they certainly can, especially bedrooms. Mm -hmm. um, the housing trend now is open floor plans, and if that's the case, it's important. Well, the trend is the same flooring surface throughout the ground level. If you do change flooring surfaces, um, you should keep it in the same tone. Um, and then make the changes. Like when you walk through your space, the changes from room to room should be gentle the palette should be kind of the same. If you put all the colors from all the rooms on one whiteboard, they should look good together. You shouldn't, you know, move into a new room and have a totally jarring color palette or style going on. So if I wanted to, let's say, have a dramatic color in one of the rooms, is that something I should think about carrying over in some way throughout the house, the house so that there's uniformity and continuity? You can. I think it's a good idea to. Um, if you don't, that color should just be a feel-good color with the other colors. You know what I mean? Yeah. What is the most common reason that people approach you for design services? Right now, um, I'm getting most of my business from baby boomers who are now empty nesters or um, soon to be empty nesters and it's been many years since they've decorated and things are looking run down and they want to be sure that the changes that they make will be appealing to a new family coming in when it's time to sell. Um, they are also oftentimes just feeling overwhelmed because they think everything needs to be changed and I help them prioritize. If folks want to get in touch with your firm for design options for home, how can they reach you? Uh, my company name, again, is Mary Jane Derex, D-E-R-E-X, Interiors. My um, website is mjderex.com, and that's the best way. Mary Jane, thank you for your time today. The information was really helpful. I know I learned a lot and I think our viewers learned a lot as well and different design tips and things to think about as it pertains to design and how it can impact their lives. So the guidance is great. Uh, we greatly appreciate your expertise and hope our listeners find it equally useful. Thank you. It was so much my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me and I hope that people gain some value from it. 
Thanks for watching this week's episode of Ask the Experts. I'm your co-host, Jeffrey Walk. And I'm Elizabeth Finlayson. Don't forget to send us your questions, suggestions, or ideas. As always, you can reach us at asktheexperts at gmail.com. That's asktheexperts, all one word, at gmail.com. Have a productive week.